Welcome to our live training session number 50. We're going to be learning how to tune a Cadillac CTSV using our HP Tuner software. Let's jump into some details about this vehicle. It's going to have an LS6 engine that's been originally equipped from GM. Now the bottom end is stock. The cylinder heads are stocked and have been ported or upgraded, but we will find they've been fitted with upgraded valve springs. The push rods have been changed and has a custom ground camshaft. Now the cam specs are going to be a 235 intake duration with a 0.63 lift. The exhaust side is going to be a 243 duration with a 0.61 lift. So the cam is relatively large. It's really geared more towards torque production rather than all out power, but we will find it's going to make a decent jump in power production out of this LS6 engine. Now, in addition to this, we have an intake, we have long tube headers, and we have exhaust. We'll find the fuel system's all stock, throttle body's all stock, intake manifold's all stock. So it's relatively simple otherwise, as far as the modifications go. So we're gonna be focusing on how to go and properly tune a drive-by wire Gen 3 application with a larger camshaft. We've had a lot of requests from our students in the GM Gen 3 training course of how to go about doing this. So we've added it now into our live training videos here. Let's jump into this very first video so we can learn how to create our base calibration file, get our engine fired off, and start our calibration process. Welcome to our live training session here with our Cadillac CTSV. Now we just went over all the details that have been done to the vehicle. Let's jump into our VCM editor software so we can do a read on our ECU, save the file out, and then begin our live training session and begin creating our base calibration file that we're going to be starting off with here. So, when we're in our VCM editor software I have up on my laptop screen, I have my MPVI2 cable plugged in via USB to my laptop. Then I also have that plugged into the OBD2 port on the vehicle. I have the key to the all the way to the on position, but the engine not running. So we're going to be doing a read and reading the original file out of this ECU. So this has not been flashed as far as I can tell. Um, I did do a quick test read and write and license this particular vehicle with this MPVI2 cable before we began. We're not going to cover how to do that. We've covered that in the training course, but we'll find that it looks like everything is going to be stock. So we're going to be starting off with a stock file and essentially going through and making all of our editing changes. So this will run, run correctly with the big camshaft that's been installed and all the other modifications that have been done. So we're going to go here into our read vehicle, click read vehicle. We're going to go here and just simply click the read button. Now, when we click read here, let's give it a second. I noticed this exact same uh, window that prompted up here when I went to do the read process just to make sure everything's going to work properly. It was going to be telling me that no VIN was detected. Please enter a VIN or cancel to continue without one. Now in this particular vehicle, I don't know if this PCM has been replaced at some point in time. Maybe there was a flood, maybe the PCM went bad, and the dealer never wrote the VIN to the actual ECU. This happens every so often when I'm tuning G GM Gen 3s. I don't know exactly the cause of it, but in this case, I could enter in the car's VIN number so that it was VIN coded to the ECU, to the car, or I could just click cancel here and it'll generate an artificial VIN code. We can always go back in and add a VIN if we'd want to at a different point in time, but for right now, I don't know the VIN code for the car, so I'm gonna click cancel here and allow it to do the read process. So now we're gonna be reading the original file out of this ECU. This process takes several minutes in order to do the read. We wanna make sure that we always save the original file that we've read out of the ECU as original. I'll show you that saving process. It's very important if we ever want to go back to the original file that we have a copy of it. If we're switching to a different operating system, let's say we're going from our original file to a one bar or two bar operating system, that's going to require us to change the operating system type. When we do that, it's going to be going and applying the new operating system enhancements and patch on top of the existing original file. If we save it as a different name, we don't save it as the original file before we do any kind of modifications. We can't go back to that original file. We're gonna have to go into the repository on HP Tuner's website, grab a stock equivalent file, and pay a relicensing fee again, which is gonna cost you two credits or $100. So we're gonna be avoiding that, always saving the original file. Even if the vehicle was tuned at some other point in time, we wanna save the file as original, and then we can go in and make a new file name and start off with a different file naming. So we, don't, again, don't overwrite the original. Always very important. doesn't matter if you're going to be on HP tuners or any other engine management systems. It's proper file structure and proper file saving techniques that we definitely want to adhere to so it's not going to bite us later point in time. Again, if we want to convert it back to a stock file or if we want to go and troubleshoot, we want to see if something we're, we were doing in the calibration process was causing an issue, we would be able to very quickly sort it out if we would flash back the original file. We know the original file is the original state of the ECU it would uh, allow us to essentially eliminate another variable if we're doing troubleshooting, we're trying to figure out an issue. So right now it's showing here about three minutes left 
on my read process. So what I'm gonna do here is just be patient. I'm gonna stop talking right now. As soon as it finishes off the read process, we're gonna go and learn how to do the proper file saving and then going through and starting to apply all of the changes we need to make into our base file in order to get our training here started. So I'm gonna let it finish off doing the read and then we'll continue on here in just a few minutes. All right, so now it's almost finished right here. We can see it's finishing up the read process. It's gonna prompt me to go and save the file here. And what we're gonna do is create a custom folder in order to save this original file. I'm gonna go up here in my directory and I'm going to save it here in my, uh, my let's go here into my documents, into HP Tuners, I have a separate folder here. We're gonna go into logs and tunes, and then we can save it within this folder here. So documents, HP tuners, logs and tunes. I'm gonna to go to my new folder and I'm gonna label this CTSV Gen 3. This is a Gen 3 controller here. And within the folder itself, I'm gonna be labeling this as original. So again, very important that we save this as the original file so that if we wanna go back to stock for whatever reason, we can return it back to stock for troubleshooting purposes, or if the vehicle is going to get sold and all the parts are going to be taken off, we can turn it back to stock. We don't have to go to the repository, get another file, pay new licensing fee, and waste money and waste time. Let's go here and click Save. All right, so now it's, it's saved as original. We can see it up top here. We can start to go and edit this file and work with it. Now, the very first thing that I like to do when I begin my process is jump up here into Operating System and see if there's any enhancements that are available. We can see right here we have a speed density operating system enhancement. We have a two bar and three bar. Now in this case, this is naturally aspirated. We have stock map sensor. We're not running any positive manifold pressure. We would choose our first option here, apply code modification. So this is what I'm going to apply right here. When I apply it, it's gonna give me a very distinctive set of rules here. It's gonna tell me to go and- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.